G, welcome to my workshop. Today's lovely guitar is, um, it's kind of a labor of love of mine. Um, as you probably know from past videos, I am, am a uh, huge fan of uh, Nirvana, especially their early stuff. Um, and uh, I recently came across an eBay auction for this body. And uh, I immediately know, knew that it was one of those uh, Univox um, Epiphone Strat styles that Kurt Cobain used on, in the early days. Of course, he's kind of a pioneer. Nowadays, we uh, it's pretty common practice to go and comb pawn shops and 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 build little bastard guitars. Um, you could even, um, you know, back in the old days, you could still find. Uh, real Fender stuff at uh, crazy prices, but um, I guess that's why Fender now has the Pawn Shop series guitars. But trying to capitalize on uh, on something that. Um, well, anyways, moving on. <laughs> um, this particular guitar, um, as you can see, she was pretty ugly. She was really ugly, and. Um, when I got it, I didn't know if the pickups were going to work, um, and I really didn't know uh, what shape the body was in. I got it in, and it's pretty much like you see it. Somebody had uh, um, stripped off, worn off pretty much all the finish, and I considered refinishing it in like a sonic blue or the color that Kurt's guitar was, which was a sort of a fiesta red, um, and uh, I dug into it, pulled the pick guard off, and I have never seen <laughs> such tweakerosity in all of my years. I mean, I've seen some tweakered out stuff. I've seen I've seen soldering done with a lighter. But I've never seen what was going on underneath this pickguard. Somebody had actually used a twisty, a bread twist tie, um, for the ground wire from one pickup to the switch. And uh, needless to say, took that all out. One pickup worked. The other one, it wasn't working. I pulled the cover off and discovered that it had uh, the lead wire was was just uh, unsoldered. So I soldered that back on. If you check the eBay auction you'll see um, a picture of the the ohm readage on the uh, the pickups this one is um, a 10.01 and this this one is a 10.1 so as single coils go they're pretty damn hot um, anyway so I resurrected the electronics on it um, I found this this neck um, I've had it in my pile for a while I think it's an Ibanez but I'm not sure it had nothing on the headstock um, but you know it had the strat heel on it uh, medium jumbo frets um, and I thought with a little bit of staining to work it would look great with this guitar and I was right um, you've probably noticed by now there's words written all over the guitar um, like I said it the finish on it is what it is. I don't know if it's natural relicking or part of the tweakerism that went on with the uh, electronics. Um, so instead of spending hours and hours of filling it and sanding it and, and bringing it back to new, which I think would actually have dis disrespected the instrument because it's gone through such hell, it should show its battle scars. Um, I actually went and wrote the lyrics to most of the songs from the Nirvana Bleach album on it. So it says hello, hello Cobain, come on in. Um, here's another one. I've had, I've had a lobotomy, save your family, surrealistic fa fantasy, bad boy fight. Um, you know, free is on here. And anyways, so you know, this guitar represents um, the sheer boredom that one would have on on tour. In, the, in a van with three to five other sweaty guys between one major city to another. Um, <laughs> that said, I, I just think it's pretty cool. If you're a Cobain fan, you'll totally get it. If, um, if you thought Nirvana was a joke, then, um, then you're probably going to like um, click off the video right now. But I'm spending too much time on that. Let's get down to the features. Like I said before, we've got classic, uh, I think these are Univox 
um, uh, single coil pickups. The bobbins on them are like an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths tall, which is probably why they're so powerful. It has um, a single volume knob, and then it has um, I I found, had a old Tiesco, or I'm sorry, Tysco. <laughs> what was I thinking? It's early. Um, tone knob. So that's on here. Um, this switch here was there's there's like a weird capacitor on the back that I think is fried. Um, so I think this was originally like a fuzz circuit type thing. I'm, I'm not really sure. Needless to say, it doesn't work, so it is simply for looks. You can tell people it's a turbo button, a cool button, whatever you want to call it, you can call it that. Um, it had a three-way switch hole um, in it when I got it, so I put a brand new um, a Gibson box three-way switch in. Um, down is bridge, up is neck, middle is both, of course. Uh, you have what I believe to be the Ibanez neck. Um, I stained it to match the body. It has uh, vintage uh, open gear tuners on it, which which add to or which which would be typical for a guitar like this. Um, on the front, I painted it and originally wrote "I'm in Nirvana" and then scratched it out to uh, to show. It was, it was, I did it because Kurt Cobain was such a um, such a tormented soul. I mean, one minute he loved the fact that he was in a in a band that everybody loved, and on the other hand, he hated it because everybody loved his band. But uh, anyways, also like I said, I've got the lyrics to I think I don't know. I spent a while working on it. I think almost every song from the Bleach album is represented here in some form or fashion. Um, but before I kick on the amp, I wanted to play this acoustically so you could hear how, even though it's like a multi-ply body, it's two pieces, actually four pieces. It's two pieces of what I think is mahogany, and then, uh, then there, there is, um, maybe it's like an ash, like an ash, um, cap on it, front and back. That was because it was a sunburst. They wanted to show good, good material, but... Even though it's been roughed up, the neck pocket has been chipped. Oh, and that reminds me. Um, I had a, an old Made in Japan neck plate, so I put that on. And I also glued the neck. Um, because this guitar has been abused in that, um, it has a few cracks in it. So I went ahead and glued it in completely in the bottom. So it has the neck plate holding it on initially, but it is also glued on. This guitar has great sustain, which I will now... Um, demonstrate to you with no amp on, I'm going to show you how it sounds acoustically. So yeah, that is, that is this guitar, no amp. So now I'm going to kick on the amp, take it over to the clean channel. And so this is the bridge in clean. Neck. You'll notice on the clean, that neck that neck pickup is dirty, so if you're, I mean, this guitar has the punk spirit totally wrapped around it and into its soul, but I tell you, this guitar would be great for garage rock, as well as uh, dirty, smoke-filled bar blues. <laughs> single volume guitar I don't have to tell you but some of you out there do need to know uh, when you've got it in the middle pickup uh, middle position running both pickups you can adjust the uh, the volume of the pickups by simply raising and lowering um, the pickups so you know if you wanted a lot more bass in the 
in the middle position, you'd bring this up as high and you bring you bring the bridge down. Of course, that affects when you're using the individual pickups, but. But, let's do this now. I'm gonna kick on the game. It's at 50%. You were thinking, it's going to bust out a whole bunch of crappy Nirvana riffs. I'm not going to do that. Because that would be disrespectful. And uh, YouTube hates it. So, um, as you can hear, there's a little bit of hum. These are 30-year-old single coils. Um, so, um, you love them because they're 30, 40-year-old single coils. And you might hate them because I'm standing about four feet away from the fluorescent lights. But let's do this. Cranking it up to three quarters. You can tell that this guitar really embodies um, that classic early Seattle sound because those guys weren't playing $2,000 Les Pauls through a $3,000 stack. They were playing pawn shop scores through little combo amps because it wasn't about, you know, perfect tone or or guitar geekdom. It was about the soul and, and that. And in the process, playing with soul and playing with conviction, um, they, they elevated what is essentially a, a, a student guitar to a guitar of great, um, great presence. Um, I can get all like weepy and stuff like that, but um, the, the point is, this is a great guitar. Um, it's definitely fun if you're a Nirvana or Cobain or even a modern, you know, um, Black Keys fan, this guitar will help you achieve that sound because those, those recordings weren't made with high-end gear. They were made with basic, affordable, accessible um, gear. And it, was, it allowed the soul and the heart of those musicians to pour out. But, um, yeah, so let's get past that. Anyways, my name's Mike G. Uh, check out my other uh, videos and, uh, and uh, check back on my eBay page because I'm posting guitars all the time now. Thanks a lot. I'm out.